Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today to do a video that I've never done before. Um, I did float this idea in a get ready with me slash Q&A the other week and a few people were interested in me doing it. So I thought, why the heck not? Um, but the background of this is uh, late last year, I bought my first Pat McGrath palette. Uh, on the Pat McGrath website, the palettes are 205 Australian dollars plus shipping. I think shipping was about $25. So I paid a lot of money for this eyeshadow palette. And in my, my expectations were that it was going to be above and beyond all other eyeshadow palettes I own, because probably the max I've paid for any other eyeshadow palette is maybe a hundred bucks, maybe. So for me, I was like, okay, if this is double plus um, what my normal eyeshadow palettes are, I really feel like this has to give me amazing, amazing, amazing results. And if the eyeshadows are so spectacular that they blend well, they apply well, they're pigmented, they last all day, then I can definitely justify looking at buying more and buying less of cheaper eyeshadows. Now, if you did watch that review of the bronze seduction palette that I did, you'll know that I didn't feel that way. I thought there were some pretty eyeshadows. Some of them were nice, but they were just eyeshadows. They weren't above and beyond other quality of eyeshadows that I own. And I was quite disappointed. Now in that video, I did get a bit of backlash from a lot of people saying, you're using it wrong. You have to mix it with a mixing medium. You have to apply it wet. You have to do this. You're doing it wrong. Meh, you're using the wrong brushes. You're using this, you're doing that. People were also saying that you're not a makeup artist, so it's not for you. And I just felt like saying to those comments, um, if you're paying over 200 Australian dollars for an eyeshadow palette of 10 eyeshadows, they should almost apply themselves. They should apply well on no primer, on primer, of sticky primer, like over glitter primer, mixing mediums, wet. They should do everything because they are so damn expensive. Secondly, these palettes are not makeup artist palettes. They're made by a makeup artist, but this sort of packaging is not makeup artist friendly. It just isn't. This is not designed for makeup artists, this is designed for consumers that want the like they want the experience of oh, I'm buying from a makeup artist brand. You're buying a name. So anyway, I decided when I saw there was a sale on Sephora Australia because since the start of the year, they have actually stocked Pat McGrath in Sephora Australia, so it's a bit cheaper to buy them now. I thought I'll pick up some more palettes and I'll really give them another go because everyone's telling me they're amazing and you're wrong. So I really wanted to try them again. And I picked up this one as well as another one. This is, I think the sub subliminal palette. It's one with blues in it. The other one that I picked up has like gold and greens. And I noticed when using this that there were some shades that I was like, okay, I've got dupes for this really, really, really easily. Another thing people were telling me is like, these are so unique, these topper shades, you've got to use them as topper shades. They're so, so unique. You know, you'll never find any other eyeshadow that is good. So I, I was thinking about that. And then when I found some dupes in my collection, I was like, wait, these aren't that goddamn unique. So I thought what I'm going to do is do one eye using the Pat McGrath subliminal palette and one eye using dupes. Can you pick which one on my eyes right now is the dupe and which one's the Pat McGrath? If you want to find out, keep watching. Before we do start, I did want to point out that I wanted to use pretty much every shadow in this palette. Um, so I created a bit of a mishmash of a look because I wanted to use all shades. The only shade I didn't use because I couldn't find a dupe for is this gold one here. Um, I do have similar sort of colors to this, but I don't have the same finish. So this is a sort of a micro glitter um, sort of shimmer. I do have this sort of white to gold shifting eyeshadow, but I just don't have the same finish. So I didn't bother including that, but I did find dupes for every other of the shades in this palette. Um, and I decided to use them all on my eyes today. So it's a bit of a long one and um, it's not the sort of uh, way I would sort of suggest using this palette because you can sort of get this look using maybe three of the eyeshadows, but I wanted to use all shades versus dupes so you can get a really good idea of how the shades compare to other shades that I've got in my collection. So let's get onto it. All right, so by now you would have seen the look that I created. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I have tried to use this palette. I've tried to use all nine shades that I'm duping in a look and it is a lot of eyeshadow. It's a lot of finishes. Um, the look didn't really turn out great. So. Um, so that's my biggest challenge today is not so much duping the eyeshadows, but actually creating a look that doesn't look crazy. Um, because the last one was not great. 
Before I continue as well, I've got a bunch of brushes in front of me and I wanted to point out that I will be using a different brush per eye and I've just tried to pick a lot of brushes that I've got doubles of. So that's sort of limited what brushes I'm using, but at least it keeps it even. All right, so on my eyes, I've got the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Eyeshadow Primer in the shade Lit. Um, I did put that on just before I did my brows, so it is completely set up. Um, I did also just set this area a little bit with a face powder because there's no sort of um, cream matte shades in this palette. And um, I just think it blends uh, eyeshadows a bit better if I do that. All right, so this eye today will be the Pat McGrath eye. It's actually the better eye to do makeup on because right now I've got a little bit of a skin reaction here. So there's a bit of patchiness here. It's not the eyeshadow, it's just my face. So like I said before, my biggest challenge in this video is actually trying to use all shades and have it not look like really bold and really dominating. I'm going to start with that shade there, which is Skin Show Nude. You have to keep this thing to know the shades, which is a bit frustrating. So this is a shade that I found so many dupes for. Um, Morphe had dupes, Anastasia Beverly Hill ha Hills had dupes, Too Faced had dupes. It's sort of your standard um, neutral highlight shimmer shade, so it wasn't anything too unique. Uh, the one that I found probably most similar was from the Tarte Aspen Ovard collection. Mind you, I only looked for dupes for about 20 minutes in my collection. If I searched more, I would have found closer dupes. Um, but this one down here, which is the highlighter, I found that was close enough. So I'm going to swatch them side by side. You can probably see on the finger that the texture is different, but the color is very similar. This is a lot more sort of powdery. This is a lot thinner and actually sticks to the skin a little bit better. So this is Tarte. This is Pat McGrath. So let's do it. So this is Pat McGrath. It's just your standard sort of light shimmer. And this is Tarte. So they look quite similar. All right, so I'm gonna apply eyeshadows a little bit differently to what I normally do. Um, normally I'd use this maybe, I don't know, in the inner corner or something, but there's so many topper shades and so many shades to go around. that I'm actually going to start by just putting this here. I kind of like to work sometimes shimmer into this area. Um, I think it sort of opens up the eye and can look really interesting flattering. So I'm using this sort of as a base. So that is the Pat McGrath. There's nothing particularly exciting about it. Um, it applies like soft sort of highlight nude shade. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it is what it is. And for the Tarte side um, or the dupe side, this is same sort of thing. So just off the bat, I think this one is more of a satin sort of finish. This looks like it's more shimmery, but they both are very similar. Um, I actually probably like the shimmeriness of this one more than this one. It sort of just blends into not much, but they both applied quite well. Now I'm gonna go in with this matte shade, which is called Ultimate Taupe. One thing I have noticed about this shade is it's quite cool toned. So I do have many sort of transition taupey brown shades, but I know that this applies on the eye a lot more gray than um, sort of other dupes that I have in my collection. So one that I wanted to use, but I might have to use it softly because it's a darker color, is actually from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette. It's this shade here called Twig. So it's a similar shade, but this is a little bit darker. So hopefully you can see them there. That is the Pat McGrath one. That's the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. So let's swatch them. So Pat McGrath, it's just, you know, a matte and Anastasia Beverly Hills. They look very similar, um, but this one is a little bit darker as you can see. So I will either build this one up or just apply this one a little bit lighter. On the same fluffy brush, I'm just going to put that slightly just in the crease. Now I'm gonna find that I'm gonna be overlapping a lot of eyeshadows, but normally I do looks with maybe maximum four. <laughs> All right, I was just interrupted by the mailman, so I don't remember what I was saying, but we're just putting in some of that taupe color. So it does blend very, very nicely. It's a very subtle sort of color, quite cool toned. Um, and I think I was saying before that I'm gonna struggle applying so many eyeshadows, so that probably will overlap. I'm just not used to using nine eyeshadows in one look. Now I've swapped brushes and the Anastasia Beverly Hills one is a lot more pigmented. It picks up a lot softer and a lot more pigmented so I've got to tap off quite a lot of this but it looks the color is very very similar this is just a little bit more pigmented so I've got to be very light with it 
does blend just as nicely and it's a really beautiful kind of cool toned crease shade. Just looking at it, uh, so I can definitely see that this highlight shade is a lot more shimmery on this eye. This um, sort of crease color, which I'll put a tiny bit more in, uh, definitely is more pigmented and is actually more cool toned than this one. This one has a little bit more warmth to it um, and this shimmer is almost, almost doesn't look like it's there. It's very, very uh, subtle. All right, then I want to put on the majority of my lid or like least sort of the inner half, I want to put this purple shade here, which is called Lilac Dusk. This is quite a cool toned purple shade, a little bit silvery. Um, and I don't have too many in my collection like this because it's not a color I particularly like, but I did find one that is a color dupe, not so much a, the finish of it. So in the Dream Sequence Quad by Bare Minerals, this one up here, which is a shade Romp, is a very, very similar shade. It's just a lot more um, pigmented and more foiled. Whereas the Pat McGrath one is a little bit more subtle and has a slight glitter in it as well. But those are the two colors there. We have Pat McGrath, we have Bare Minerals. So Pat McGrath, sorry, that was Bare Minerals and this one's Pat McGrath, which is a lot more subtle. Let's try to build that up. So that's with a second layer. So they're very similar colors. Bare Minerals is just a lot more solid in like pigmentation um, and it doesn't have that little bit of sparkle that the Pat McGrath one has, but they're very, very similar. I feel like I am noticing that with the Pat McGrath side, um, it is just a lot more muted. I think a lot of people say that these eyeshadows really pack a punch, but I'm going to go in with a second layer of this because I just feel like they're very, very muted, which, you know, can be some people's cup of tea. I quite like a bold eyeshadow that I can choose to apply softly or build up, but these are sort of just very subtle. Okay, onto the Bare Minerals side. I really love the Bare Minerals formula. I think they are very easy to apply and um, the pigmentation is really great. They're really soft. So you can see already that this one captures the light a lot more. Um, I do feel like it's more of a solid color and it just applies really, really easily. So yeah, if I had to pick one that I like more, it's definitely the Bare Minerals. All right, now we're going to go with this matte shade, which is just a cool toned brown, dark brown matte, and it's called Depth. Um, I did find many dupes for this. This is not a unique shade by any means. It's like a slightly more cool toned dark brown, and I could find in about 20 minutes, I think I found about five or six dupes for that. The one that I'm going to use is in my Melt Rust stack. It's the bottom shade Rot. Um, and if you look at it there, it looks a lot darker and a lot more sort of warmer than what the Pat McGrath one looks like. So I'll show you in the pan. So there you go. So it looks a lot different, but they do apply very similar. All right, so I'm just putting this in the outer corner. So once again, this is very soft. One thing I find possibly problematic about the Pat McGrath eyeshadows is that because they do blend so well, they sort of muddy together very, very easily. So you've got to be careful if you like um, the colors not to all look like one color. Also, there's a lot of fallout because they are soft and they do sort of blend very easily. Yeah, fallout is an issue and muddying the colors together is also a big issue that I've sort of experienced. Sometimes you'll put on multiple colors on your eye from this one palette and then you end up going, oh, it's it looks like it's one color muddied together. So that's one issue I do have with this palette, but they do blend nicely. The sun is giving me the shits today. It's going behind clouds and causing issues. So sorry if there's like weird shadows. Um, hopefully we'll... It will sort itself out later, but this is the melt one. So the pigmentation is very nice. These do blend nicely as well. It's a very similar color. I'm just sort of starting soft with this and building it up because uh, the pigmentation is... I didn't even swatch these. I'll swatch these in a sec. So I don't know if you can tell, and maybe when I stop to swatch these, you will see, um, these sort of hold the color a lot better. So they do blend, but once they're on the eye, you can see the distinct difference between the purple and the brown. Whereas this one, it sort of muddies together a lot. So if you like that really, really, really blended look, you'll like that. But if you do like the distinction being quite separate and then choosing to blend them together if you want, um, this, eye is, uh, this eye is a lot better. Just both shades work a lot better. So yeah, once again, I think this wins for pigmentation. They both blend nicely. This has a lot more fallout 
and it just sort of melds with the purple. And this is them swatched. So on this one, we've got the Pat McGrath. This one is melt. So Pat McGrath here. So you can see that it just blends out. The more you blend it, the more it blends out. Uh, melt is this one here. So similar sort of thing. This one is more grippy on the skin. Um, which allows it to build up on itself a little bit more and not blend out as much. So if I did this, the melt one stays a lot longer. So the pigmentation just grips to the eye a bit better. All right, we're doing the really boring shades at the moment. We're getting sort of the base down and then we're going to go in with the toppers and sort of the fun shades. So trust me, we're getting there. Um, I'm going to go in with this shade here, which is called Substance. It's just like a brownie dark gray shimmer. So this is it here, like that. And prepare to be surprised, but I'm gonna compare it to a Morphe eyeshadow, Morphe. Uh, this is the 35T palette, there we go. And the shade in the very corner is a good dupe for it. So I'm just gonna use this so we can show you. So Pat McGrath, Morphe. There we go, similar, very similar. With a firmer, sort of thinner brush, I'm going to run that under the eye. I do have a lot of fallout still going on, but I will. I want to see how many, how much fallout compared to the two sides. But I'm running this quite far under my eye. Just, it's a nice sort of, you know, shimmer shade. It's quite nicely pigmented. There's nothing too exciting about it, but I've put that on quite boldly. Then with another brush and on the other eye, we go with Morphe, which once again, it applies in a very similar way. So slightly different color, same sort of effect, just a shimmery dark gray under the lid. This one, I think, uh, I think this is a little bit more, once again, grippier on the lid. And this one is a little bit more powdery, but you know, they're very, very similar in application. All right, to finish off the sort of base of the look, I'm going to go in with the black. So I'm going to use a very small fluffy brush and just put that in the outer corner slightly and maybe a little bit under the lower lash line um, on both eyes. So this shade is just a matte black. It's called Extreme Black. And the dupe is just, there's so many matte blacks. It's so easy to dupe a matte black. It's just about which one you like to use. I'm going for the Sultry palette and I'm going to use, oh, drop a brush. I'm going to use the one in the corner here. Pat McGrath, Anastasia Beverly Hills. So Pat McGrath, it is like a nice bold, almost looks like a warm toned black. And this is Anastasia Beverly Hills. They both have very similar pigmentation. They both feel soft. This one feels slightly more uh, finely milled, but I know they both apply quite well. They are both quite powdery and kick up a bit in the pan when you go to dip your brush in. All right, just a little bit. I'm just dotting it on to start with and then I'll sort of blend it a little bit once the majority is on the eye. You can see it is quite nicely pigmented, blends quite easily. I might not even bother putting this on the lower lash line. I think it's fine. It sort of works into the color underneath very well. Anastasia time. So once again, it's a very nice black. Uh, it does have a bit of kick up in the pan when you put your brush into it. So you got to be careful and it blends really nicely. I still think this eye looks a lot more distinct with the colors that I've put in there. Um, and I prefer that. I think you have more control over where you want the colors to be, but this looks like it sort of blends all into one. So, and this has barely any fallout. This one has quite a bit. All right, now for the fun shades. So this quad is sort of like the topper sort of shades or the, um, you know, interesting shades in the palette. I don't have a dupe for this one as I explained at the start. So I'm going to use these three. Okay, I'm gonna start with this sort of duochrome shade up here. This is called VR Violet. And that's what it looks like swatched. I have noticed that a lot of people kind of quote this particular shade as being a very, very unique shade and one of the reasons they really love this palette, but I have found a very, very close dupe for it. And it is the Jeffree Star highlighter. This is the Supreme Frost highlighter in hypothermia. It is virtually the same thing for a fraction of the price and a lot more product. This contains eight grams of product, whereas I think uh, the eyeshadow palette, each shade contains one point something grams. So you're getting a lot more product for a lot less if you like this one shade. So that's that one. I'm gonna swatch the one next to it. You can see them here. So this is Pat McGrath. It's a nice topper shade. It does shift. Uh, I'll show you in the mirror. It shifts blue to pink and it's got a slightly tan base. 
and this is Jeffree Star. This is a little bit smoother to apply because it's technically a highlighter, like a face highlighter, but it's definitely more uh, sparkly in my opinion. Hopefully you can see in the mirror that there's the pink shift. Um, if you can see that, it goes pink to blue. I did also find a dupe for these shades, but a different finish in the Viseart Grand Pro 2 palette. So it's got the same color shift, but it's uh, more of a shimmer rather than a sort of baked micro glitter. So if you like this sort of color shift, but you want it in a shimmer formula, um, definitely the Viseart one has one and I'm sure other brands do these as well. All right, so I've got some of the Viseart one on my finger and I'm just gonna dot it here. So you can see that it just gives a blue sort of iridescent shift to the eye. You could definitely, definitely, definitely build this up uh, and put it over a glitter glue, or you could, you could definitely apply it wet. You can put it um, on with a mixing medium to make it more intense. But um, I just wanted to see how it applies over sort of normal eyeshadow. So yeah, it's just a nice glittery blue topper shade. I can't see any duochrome. I can't see it shifting pink at all. All right, and I've cleaned my finger and I'm going in with the Jeffree Star one. So like I said, I'm covering up the work I've already done, but it's just because I wanna test out all shades if possible. Okay, what I've noticed is that the Jeffree Star one looks a little bit more sort of aqua colored and it's a lot more sparkly, whereas this one is a little bit more vibrant blue and it is, a, it's sparkly, but a little bit more refined. This one twinkles in the light a lot more. They both have fallout. So they both have fallout if you apply them with your finger. Um, probably Jeffree Star has a little bit more because it's a, it's more of a softer consistency, like it's a drier consistency, but they both give a very, very similar effect on the eye. So I can tell a difference in the color in person, but I think if you put liner and stuff on, uh, it probably wouldn't look that different. It's just a slight tone of blue that's slightly different. I'm going to use another topper shade, this one here. I'm going to use that uh, just maybe in the inner corner on the lower lash line, just a small amount. It's a white that has a blue iridescent glitter. So it's called Astral White. And the dupe for it that I had in my collection, and I'm sure there are other dupes out on the market, especially with like color shifting highlighters and whatnot, but I found this ColourPop Super Shock Shadow. This is in the shade, it's called New Magic. So that's what it looks like. And on the different finger, I'm going in there. You can see them both there, Pat McGrath. So it's got that same blue shift, shift as that uh, violet VR violet shade, so it shifts blue, and this is ColourPop. There we go. I think the ColourPop one looks a little bit more intense with the sparkle. I wanted to mention as well that even though this has a big mirror, I find it very, very difficult to use because it's stuck at this angle. If you wanna use your mirror, you literally have to tip your eyeshadow palette up like this to actually use it, and it's a bit, it's a bit frustrating. All right, Pat McGrath on a small detailer brush. I'm just popping it in here, that barely did anything. Let's pop some more. So once again, that sort of gives that blue shift that this one gives, um, maybe slightly more of that greenier blue that the Jeffree Star one gives. And I am just applying this over regular primer. So you can make it way more intense if you wanted to, but you can do that with all eyeshadows. It's not exclusive to Pat McGrath. You can do it with Jeffree Star highlighter if you want. So um, yeah, if you want it to be more intense, you can but I want it to be a little bit more subtle. Anyway, moving on to my five or $6 ColourPop dupe. Okay, this one sticks to the eye so much better because it's that moussier formula. Um, it just doesn't sort of dust away like this one did. And it definitely builds on itself a bit better. So you can see that you can sort of be a bit more controlled with it. If you wanted to just put it in one spot, it sort of stays a bit better. This one sort of goes everywhere. So that's a lot more intense of a sparkle, but once again, the shift is ultimately the same as the one above it. I still question why there was a need for two topper shades that ultimately give the same effect on the eye. Um, and I understand that if you use, you know, the top shade by itself, it'll look more purple. If you use this shade by itself, it'll look more white. But um, whenever I've seen people defend these, they're like, they're toppers, you gotta use them as toppers. Well, when you put them on top of something, they look the same. Like, what's the point of having the two? Just I would like one that shifts purple or shifts, 
I don't know, green or something. Something that just doesn't look like the same blue. The last shade that I'm using is this blue one here. It's a really, really beautiful metallic blue. This is called Blitz Blue. Uh, it's a nice sort of soft uh, blue. And I really love this color. It's one that I really enjoy swatching. I'm like, oh, look at it. It's so beautiful. But when I actually use it on the eye, it sort of takes over the look and makes it look very... Um, extreme even though the look is not a great look that I've got going on uh, this really does overtake a lot of it and it can be quite messy to use so that's that one it's a beautiful blue metallic now I did find a dupe in my collection these are very popular shades especially in 2018 so you can probably find a lot of singles a lot of pigments a lot of palettes that have these metallic blues but one that I found that I thought was quite similar is by MAC so this is a limited edition eyeshadow from a holiday collection and it is technically a color drenched pigment in the shade Moon is Blue. So that's what it looks like there on my clean finger. That's what it looks like. It's very beautiful. And the main difference I've noticed uh, is this one's a lot grippier of a formula. This one sort of feels like it could dust away, whereas this one really feels like it grips to the skin. This also has a lot more of a base color. So it really does have that sort of pigment to it. Whereas if I did that with the Pat McGrath one, which I'll do now, if you sort of blend it away, there's not much base color. And I did use this the other day and I found that this shade does fade a lot on the eye because it is sort of like just a metallic topper sheen. So if I just dust this away, you can see that the Pat McGrath one doesn't stick to the skin as well as the MAC one. And I've noticed that's a big sort of thing with the Pat McGrath eyeshadows. They sort of just dust away and they don't grip to the skin as well. They're very, very blendable, but they almost to the point where they blend away. And the way I've decided to use these is actually as a liner because I feel like it overtakes a look really easily. So I'm wetting my brush and I'm applying these shadows wet. So this is Pat McGrath wet. This is a great way to use these shades because like I said before, I tried to use this uh, the other day and it just really made the look kind of messy and really sort of hard to come back from. Whereas if you apply them as a liner, um, they are really, they're a lot more, imagine this with just like a nude eye, you can get a really nice, beautiful metallic liner. I don't know how long it lasts, but it does look pretty. Onto the MAC one. I've never used these wet, so I'm curious. These, I don't even know if these are designed to be used wet, but I'm giving it a go. All right, so from those uh, eyeshadows used as liners, um, I have used each eyeshadow before as an eyeshadow, and I think they, I think the MAC one lasts a lot better just because it grips to the skin better, but um, the Pat McGrath one has a nice metallic finish. And I think you can see that with the eyeliner as well. If you do apply it wet, I think the Pat McGrath one, you can see where the wet was. It sort of dissolved, it sort of melted away the eyeshadows. So the Pat McGrath ones are designed to be mixed with um, water and also other mediums to create different like paint finishes. So I think it works better in this sort of way. And you can see it holds its metallic shift a lot better. The MAC one did work, um, but I think because this sort of eyeshadow isn't really designed to be mixed with water and applied wet um, it didn't hold its metallic finish it is still a nice vibrant blue but I think this one works better as a long wearing eyeshadow this one works better mixed with water so they both have their pros and cons all right I'm going to go away and clean up this fallout um, I do have a lot of brown sort of gray fallout here from this eyeshadow and I've got a bit of glitter fallout here from uh, the Jeffree Star eyeshadow. I'm going to put some mascara on, some maybe some uh, liner in my waterline, and I'll be back to compare the two sides. All right, this look looks a lot better with some mascara. I'm just using a mini hourglass caution mascara, and also I use the By Terry Terribly, no, what is it called? What is it? Crayon Cole Terribly in Royal Navy. So I've just put that on my waterline on both eyes. All right, so what have I noticed um, doing the two eyes? Firstly, they end up looking very, very, very similar. Um, so I also want to mention that when I was in low light in the bathroom, I could see the pink shift on both eyes. So even though uh, in direct sunlight, this looks just similar to the color underneath, I can see the slight purpley pink shift um, in the sort of 
uh, violet color and the Jeffree Star highlighter on both eyes, but it's very, very subtle and you know, you won't see it too often. Um, so look, I'm going to say there definitely are some differences, but they're virtually indistinguishable unless I pointed them out. Firstly, I wanted to point out that um, already this eyeshadow is starting to um, sort of move with uh, the inner corner of my eye. This one sticks to the eye a lot better. So I find that this MAC eyeshadow, it sticks to the eye a lot better than the blue, but the finish of the blue is more metallic. It's a lot more powdery and doesn't last as long from experience as this blue one, but just like it looks more metallic and more reflective when you do pack it on um, when you first apply it. So there's that. The color of the shimmer, like I said before, is slightly different. Um, but I have to say this eye looks a little bit more sparkly. This eye, is, the color is really nice. It's more of a true blue sparkle. This is more of a aqua sparkle. I prefer the color of the true blue, but they look very, very similar. And I'm sure you can see that like when you step back, they look the same. Um, I do think the experience of the eyeshadows were different and with Pat McGrath, some eyeshadows I found applied a little bit nicer or the finish was slightly nicer. Um, but I think overall, I'm gonna say I like this eye. The main thing I like about this eye is the metallic liner. I think the liner did apply a lot better, but like I showed you on my hand when I rubbed them off, the blue just doesn't stick. And I have learned from experience that this particular blue and some of the shimmer toppers as well, throughout the day, they don't last as well as um, other eyeshadows. So that's just a, something I've noticed with these eyeshadows. But I do think the mattes blend really nice with the Pat McGrath eyeshadow. So I think um, sort of that transition color and the brown, the sort of dark gray brown, they blend really nicely. But I think with Pat McGrath, from my experience, and I'm sure you saw, um, one sort of downside of the nice blending eyeshadows is that they blend into one another. So the other day I tried to use um, this shade, this shade, this shade, and that shade, and it ended up just looking like a murky version of that um, because they just blend together and they look a bit muddy. So I did find that the dupe eye, especially with the Morphe eyeshadow and the Bare Minerals eyeshadow, they actually looked quite distinct on the eye and you didn't lose a color when you applied the other or when you applied the color in the crease. So I feel like these are very blendable, but almost to its detriment where it's just looks murky and blends away to nothing. So I really don't like these sort of uh, shimmer shades. Um, I don't know if you could see on the eye and it's just a, ma a matter of preference, but I didn't find that they were very pigmented. I think they looked a little bit dull on the eye. For a shimmer, this didn't actually have much reflect when I put it on sort of at the start. It was like, what, what, what is that? Um, and these ones, like I said, they looked almost satin when applied and not very pigmented. So I feel like these are the letdown of the palette in my opinion. The shimmer formula is not as good as Morphe shimmer. I just think you can get a bolder, probably easier, um, to apply look using something like Morphe. Not all Morphe because their shadow quality does vary, but I actually prefer to go in just with a shimmery Morphe shade. Definitely prefer to go in with a shimmery um, Bare Mineral shade. That showed how easy it was to apply and get a like built up and a nice bold sort of purple look. Whereas this one, it was like, oh, is that it? It just kind of looks like a smoky, not much. So I definitely think that the formula wise, the mattes are nice here, but hopefully you saw with the other shades that I used, I used a combination of Anastasia Beverly Hills and Melt. I found that those ones, even though they weren't as finely milled, I think they applied just as well and arguably with some shades more pigmented than this palette. So blendability is great, pigmentation's not great, and I don't think the longevity of the shades work that well because they're quite powdery and they sort of just go, they, I don't know, they diffuse throughout the day. So I definitely think the interesting part of the palette for most people are these sort of topper shades or these unique shades. And compared to other dupes that I have, which was surprisingly quite easy to dupe them. Um, and if you just look for other dupes online, if you don't want to use a Jeffree Star highlighter, um, you'll be able to find pigments and whatnot that look very similar. Um, I was surprised that these two not only look similar on the eye, and I was like, what's the point of the two of them? But I actually preferred the ColourPop effect to 
to this one here because the ColourPop formula, in my opinion, sticks to the eye better. It builds on itself a better. And yes, you can use these wet or you can use them uh, over glitter glue, but I just found on their own, I preferred the ColourPop sort of formula. The Jeffree Star was a little bit fallouty and a little bit flaky, but that's because it's a face highlighter. So it's designed to be um, a washed over rather than packed on. But once again, if you applied that wet, it would, and it would give a similar effect as this wet. So, you know, these aren't super, super unique. Like I said before, I do like this blue. I think it gives a really beautiful metallic effect, but I don't think it grips to the eye well enough to last a long time. So the effect is very pretty, but it does wear off pretty quickly. I do think it mixes with water better than the MAC one, but this is designed to be mixed with water. The MAC one isn't. So as liners, they both did a decent job, um, but the Pat McGrath one did look slightly better because that was, that it's, it's designed to do that and the MAC one isn't. For one that isn't designed to be used wet as a liner, it, this one worked pretty well as well. So I think for me, this experiment really um, solidified that, um, these are just eyeshadows. The, this Pat McGrath palette, it's got a high price tag mainly because of the name associated with it. It's like Pat McGrath, the brand is sort of associated with Lux. So if you think of like a YSL hand, handbag, you know, you're paying for a name and you're paying for, oh, that looks pretty. Is it any more functional than a cheaper handbag? No, it's not. It's you're paying for a name, you're paying for a brand and you're paying for the look of it. If you're happy to do that, then, you know, keep buying these. But in my opinion, I don't think there's enough about this that is above and beyond the quality of other eyeshadows that I own, anywhere from Morphe to Anastasia Beverly Hills to Tarte to Melt to whatever. Um, you know, I find that the it's either comparable quality or sometimes even better quality with sort of more affordable brands. So hopefully you found that interesting. Um, I know I found it quite enlightening. I just feel like I was looking at my eyes before and I'm like, why did I spend so much money on this palette when I really didn't need to? I had it all in my collection to begin with. So um, yeah, it's, it's a wake up call for me. And that's sort of why I did this video. I really wanted to side by side see uh, if this is really worth the price tag when you look at the eyeshadows individually. And in my opinion, it's still a big no. So yeah, it's a thing. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.